such a fan, man. Um, well, I asked everybody to bring like their favorite books. I know it's very hard to pick a favorite book, um, but what did you bring? You know, for me, when you don't have money, books are a passport to the world, right? They're Amen. like, they're, they're this gift that let you see yourself in new ways and they open you to new possibilities. Yeah. And I didn't have books in my house. We had, the, as you had, the library card. Yeah. So these are my two library books. My first two library books, what? I brought Tales of the Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. Yeah. Right? Because I was like, this gave me my love of reading. Judy Bloom is a hit today. She's hit. And, and by the way, I almost took Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Because I was like the one boy who wanted to know how bras worked and everything was yeah. going. You know? you know what? Clever boy. I know. And then what gave me my love of writing is Agatha Christie. Because in those first what? chapters, there was that question I've asked myself forever, which is, is a dead body, and I want to know who done it. Oh now, my God, that's, you've always been like that. I've always been obsessed with dead people, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot. Um, well, I hear you love storytelling before you even like read books, right? Yeah, so my grandfather gave me my love of storytelling. He said, this yeah. was the story that my grandfather always told me. Yeah. And it would go like this. Batman and Robin are in the Batmobile. And in front of them, on a cliff, is a white van with the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, and Catwoman. And then they caught him. And I would go, Tell it again. Oh and he would go, gosh. Batman and Robin in the Batmobile. It's like 30 words in that story. Yeah. But I loved it. And I love my grandfather for realizing that I love storytelling. It yeah. means so much to me. Oh, we, I do that with my kids. It's so funny, too, what kids will come up when you ask your kids to tell a story. First of all, it's a good stall tactic because they'll try and like make their stories so long they my never have life. to go to bed. Yeah. But, but it is interesting to see what they come up with as well. It's, oh. I, I love and in my house, my. Trust me, my kids are also critics because I write books. <laughs> so my daughter's like, They're all you know, critics. That's not that good, Dad. You need more <laughs> razzmatazz. I'm like, are you from the 1920s, razzmatazz? razzmatazz? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? So you're best known um, as a writer of mysteries and thrillers. So how did you start writing kids' books? Yeah, you know what? Much like you, I had kids. And yeah. I wanted to write and give them better heroes to look up to. Yeah. I was tired of them looking at people who were famous being famous. I said, how do I teach them kindness? How do I teach them perseverance? How to be a yeah. good person? Yeah. So for perseverance, I did I'm Amelia Earhart the little girl who was unstoppable, right? Yeah. To teach creativity, I did I Am Walt Disney, who used his creativity to change the world. Yeah. To teach them how to fight back, I Am Rosa Parks, I Am Martin Luther King Jr. Chris L. Alpes and I, our amazing artist, just decided this is the best thing. And right now, I looked at what my kids need right now, and they're anxious. We're yeah. all anxious. And so I said, we need to do our first book on self-love. So we did I Am Oprah Winfrey. To yeah. teach the lesson, the lesson is in the book that if you want to live your best life, you got to be your true self. And we all need that lesson. Mm -hmm. I love that the books tell the backstory. I love that it tells a bit of the backstory, how they got there. Because we always see these people as like, oh man, they have this, they have this. And you don't think of like what got them there. I think yeah, that's really that, cool. That, that's the real secret of it, right? We always yeah. show them when they're kids. And yeah. we always show them when they fail. Right, because everyone you look up to, whether it is Amelia Earhart or Rosa Parks or Dr. King, yeah. they have moments where they were scared and terrified. They didn't know if they could go on, yeah. but they do. And Oprah Winfrey, best story is, right, when she's three years old in church, she finds the power of her voice. When she's a little girl, she hates the way she looks. She sleeps with a clothespin on her nose to make her nose smaller. Yeah. Her producers tell her her body's not the right type, her skin is too dark, mm -hmm. and they tell her that she cares too much about people. She finds, this is a true story, you can't make this up. She's reporting no, on I a story. I believe that last part. I know you believe this, right? 20 years in this business. And, and they tell her, she goes to cover a story about a family's house who burns down. Yeah. And she, the next day, privately, goes and gives the family blankets. And the producer yells at her and says, you can't get involved in the story. And she says, the story? What about being a good human being? Amen. And, and I want yeah. my daughter to learn that lesson. No, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. I mean, but I want my daughter to know that like they told Oprah, your body's not the right size, you don't look the right way. She you, defied the odds. You can't like, yeah. care and, and I, there's no yeah. such thing. The only person you have to be is you. That is the greatest gift you give yourself. Yeah. What I love about it specifically is my kids are obsessed with like superheroes, especially my five-year-old boy. And so I am too, I'm 39, whatever. Um, but, but I love the idea though that, that these are superheroes like as well. Oh. I love that series. So my kids have the series. So I like it's, it. it's, it's amazing though to be able to teach them, first of all, history. You're teaching so much at once without them really even realizing it. Yeah, um, and and I that's think right, it's really and, but they important. are superheroes. They yeah. are, you tell I me, mean, I will put Rosa Parks again. Tell me that's not Wonder Woman. Right? Yeah. Tell me that Abraham yeah. Lincoln is not is not. But Superman. we don't teach it like that. Right. What we te what we do with yeah. our heroes is we put them on pedestals and we make them perfect. Yeah. And we do our heroes a real disservice because they're all human beings. Yeah. And you know the the series is called Ordinary People Change the World and everyone's mm. like oh they're so amazing I'm like no no they all as I said 
have moments where they don't think they can do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we're all ordinary people. I don't care where you went to school, how much money you made. John Legend told us, right? I, ordinary I, people. I believe, change the world, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I owe him for that one now, I think. Um, <laughs> but really, I tell, my, I tell it to my kids, but I know one thing, I'm not that special. And there are parents out there who want the same thing for their kids, so they build mm -hmm. these libraries of real heroes for their kids and their nieces and their nephews, their grandkids, I love that. It's clever and it's good and it's important, so thank you for that. But well, the books, the books are powerful enough that many teachers have actually started using them in the classrooms. Yeah. Which well, is a big thing, because my mom was a teacher and they usually make you stick to that curriculum of what everybody does. Yeah, like, my, my teachers, you know. I, I love our teachers, our teachers and librarians. I mean, I've had, and of course I'll say like, we'll do a story time and they'll show, send me a picture. They watch our story times on YouTube. Mm. But what I love is they'll show me pictures of their kids dressed up as Jackie Robinson. Yeah. And here they are as Rosa Parks, and here they are as Lucille Ball. Yeah. But the best one, we had a, a school in Chicago, took our books and literally came to me, they made a whole musical with just our books. And wow. there's a little Dr. King, and there's a little Jackie Robinson, and a little George Washington, and Abraham Lincoln, and I'm like, you made a musical? That's like, brilliant. I want tickets to this now. Yeah. Like I was like, why hey, did you Hey, that's actually us? a really good idea. Like on Broadway, too, you should one word, one third that, man. I'm just saying, that's I'm a saying, great idea. So you get points like, on the back end for that. I'm okay. just saying, that's a really smart, clever idea. And in introducing, it's like, I mean, it's kind of what they did with Hamilton. They use all these historical characters, like, you know what I'm saying? But to do that in such a bigger, broader way with all the, anyway, we'll, well talk no, When after. I went to see Hamilton, I literally <laughs> brought the George Washington book and I gave it to Chris Jackson. I was like, you're my George Washington, so yes. Oh my gosh, I love that, I love that. Well, that's why this next part is so unbelievable and also infuriating. Uh, two of your books were banned by a school district in Pennsylvania. Children's books. I mean, two children's books. But I'm like, what, what year is it? Right. So, <laughs> like, and you should see my house. So I'm on Twitter, and all of a sudden someone tells me, they're like, Brad, they banned I Am Rosa Parks and I Am Martin Luther King Jr. I'm like, you know, I mean, look at these. You, this is clearly trying to like do some harm here, right? Clearly, you're trying to just destroy and villages. My yeah. wife, my <laughs> wife was so pissed. My wife is like, I'm gonna kill him, and I'm like, yeah. but I was heartbroken, <laughs> right? She's murderer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You, you know our house you, now. That's it really a good yin true. and yang you have right. going on there. But I was, but the truth was, I was heartbroken because I was like, yeah. there are all these kids that don't get that story now. Yeah. And, and when you look at that, I'm like, that's just crazy because I don't care where. I know race is a hard subject. But, but when you shield them from it, nothing progresses. God bless, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. the, I tell my kids all the time, I know it may be hard, you don't shy away from it. The only mm -hmm. way is you gotta go through. And we do our kids a huge disservice if we don't mm -hmm. discuss these issues. And, and we do ourselves because the next generation, you're not helping them, yeah. That, that's it, and, and these books are literally designed to give your kids these lessons. I have, a, you know, in the back of every book, there's a real photograph of the person. So you mm -hmm. see this cartoon story, and, and my friend told me the story. So he's white, his daughter's black, adopted, and he says, he gets to the last page of I Am Rosa Parks, and he opens it, and she sees the real picture of Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. And she says, wait a minute, this really happened. This really happened. I, and he yeah. said, and suddenly he was having the first real conversation about race with his daughter. He's like, I'm yeah. from a mixed family. I know I should have this, but this is the book that they banned, Kelly. And I'm mm. like, you must be kidding me. So the first thing we did, of course, is we got in touch with local teachers. We got in touch with, who are incredible, by the way. They, yeah. No one fights like a teacher. Yeah, hey, you one. haven't met my mama. Oh, uh, no, yeah. trust me, yeah. we have similar moms, yeah. right? Like, She's a and, Leo. And, um, and, <laughs> and what you know, we did is we did what Rosa Parks taught us to do and what Dr. King taught us to do, is protest. We said, yeah. everyone, all the books on this, not just our books, books by Malala, Sonia Sotomayor, mm -hmm. The Sesame Street book they banned, our books. We said, go buy them all and protest. There were 5,000 kids in that district, and my goal, I want a, every banned book for every kid in that district. Fight back like Rosa Parks taught. Yeah. And it's such a funny, it's such a funny, tricky thing too, especially with certain age kids, um, we'll mention puberty. As you make it a red button, I'm like, well, what's in that book? Oh, I'm like, right. you know what I'm saying? If I'm a kid and you've banned the book, I'm like, now I want to know what's in it. Right, right. Of course, I'm like, who doesn't? The moment yeah. you take it away, the publisher's like, you realize the sales just went up, and I'm like, are we rooting for all the books to be banned? Yeah, like, no, what no but it's one of those things where it's like, why? Like, it, and it's good to question, it's good to do all. I, I think it's so important.